A year ago, British cyclists were sweeping the board at the Olympic Velodrome and it definitely inspired more people to swap four wheels for two. Yet, British roads remain some of the most dangerous in Europe for cyclists. While just across the North Sea lies a cycling utopia, the Netherlands. Our countries aren't that different. So what are the Dutch doing right and what are we doing wrong? We sent the BBC's Hague correspondent, Anna Holligan, out on her Oma Fiets, the Netherlands' popular grandma bike, to seek an answer on a 200-mile journey from The Hague to London. It's history, it's a legacy, it's, um, it's knowledge. It's fast, it's cheap, it's healthy. They really have a totally different culture. You've got a long way to go before you've got the same mentality about cycling, and that's what I want to achieve. A lot of cyclists, that, you know, they're just totally, totally irresponsible. Her life was just starting, as far as I was concerned. So many things were opening up, and then, then she was dead. There's no doubt the Dutch have created some of the most coveted bike-safe streets in the world. More than half of all trips in cities like The Hague are made by bike. But the question is, would all of this work for somewhere like the UK? We're going on a mission from the Dutch Parliament to Westminster to find out if Britain could and should be going Dutch. <laughs> Dutch society is geared around the bike, but the Netherlands hasn't always looked this way. Amsterdam is a paradise for cyclists, mainly because there are no hills to climb. In the 1950s and 60s, cyclists were being squeezed to the curb as car ownership rocketed. Everyone's getting a basic three and a half gallons a week. The 1970s oil crisis shook the Dutch faith in the reliability and sustainability of the motor vehicle. Then the famous Stop the Child Murders campaign called on politicians to improve safety after more than 400 children were killed on the roads. In the university city of Groningen, electronic counters outside the parking spaces at the train station register how many spaces are available. There's room for 10,000 bikes. Cyclists are accommodated here in exactly the same way as motorists are elsewhere. We're at the city square, which used to be just like any other town, uh, full of parked cars. Today, Dutch campaigners like Mark are actively trying to encourage the Brits to adopt the Dutch system. What is the translation of it? How can we sell it and design what the Dutch have in a way that can be incorporated in the British situation? So there's a lot going on there, but it's all in a transition. Uh, I hear many excuses or myths about what makes the Dutch supposedly so different, or the Netherlands. Um, there are more similarities than differences. It is not about the climate, it's the same. Flat it would be Amsterdam's all over the world for that argument. It's not that. It's about making a choice and prioritizing what you want. <music> In the Netherlands, cyclists are treated with extra care. Dedicated traffic signals, crossings and parking spaces make for an extremely smooth ride. One of the many reasons it's so popular is that the infrastructure is integrated and intuitive. You won't see much special gear or preparation here. The smaller you are, the more protected you are. And that is written into the rules of the road. Now though, time for our great news night cycle to commence. A chance to experience a bit of bike life on the other side. The roads and cycle paths are wide enough for people to cycle along comfortably side by side. So we're going up over this hill. So Newsnight's producer and acting Sharpa Hannah can catch up and help guide us along towards the ferry. Oh, 
tell me about the route. Okay, I'm up to Sunrise on deck and time to check Twitter for some last minute advice on how to cycle UK style. No sign of any cycle paths to guide us and when they do appear, an early indication there may be some obstacles ahead. Through the countryside though it's not so bad, but this is TV and we do have some interviews to get to, so cheating slightly. The Dutch bike's taking a bit of adapting to British trains and there's no special place for them on board. And then we hit London. The cycle superhighways, London's big idea for giving cyclists their own space. London's self-styled cycling superhero sees the Dutch bike culture as part of the solution for reducing congestion. They really have a totally different culture of cycling and we've got to get there. When you cycle in Amsterdam or Copenhagen or Berlin, it's, you're not in a great fleet of people with their heads down wearing lycra who feel that they've got to get from A to B as fast as possible. You, everybody's on big sit up and beg bikes, they're weaving around, there's a much more relaxed feel to the way the cyclists occupy the streets and we need to, to get that culture going and that's why we're doing the mini hollows. Of course I believe in segregation where it's possible to do but we don't have in the centre of London particularly, we don't have enough road space to consecrate entirely to, to cyclists. Taking a slight detour off the main route towards Westminster, we enter an emerging cycling culture, which does seem to resemble the Dutch style. And it's not just the Lycra lads here. Across the UK, there are signs the Dutch dream is starting to be recognised. Here on Hackney High Street, for example, they've turned it into a bikes-only zone. It is happening. It is, there is a cycle revolution happening in London. It isn't just black and white as well. You know, there, the changes are beginning to happen. People are beginning to embrace cycling as so much more of a, a cultural part of London too, which is a fantastic thing to see. It's fantastic to see it being embraced. So it isn't just cycling in the Netherlands good, cycling in London bad. We're nowhere near perfect, but we're nowhere near absolutely hideous as well. We're, I think we're in a strange in-between place in London in cycling at the moment. <laughs> Even if cycling culture is starting to change, many drivers still see cyclists as some kind of aggressive tribe. There's not much that really, uh, gets under my skin, but you know, sometimes when you see them going through, I've seen them going through crossings when there's when there's women pushing prams. It's crazy. And others say it's not in the country's interest to give more space or financial support to cyclists. I think Boris's plans for spending more on cycling are, in essence, bonkers. Cycling is one of the most dangerous occupations you can undertake. You should realise that, and that's why, if you've got any sense, you get off your bike and actually use public transport or, or, or buy a car. They're becoming a very pushy minority group. You don't get that from motorists who are much, much better behaved, generally. Everyone agrees it's going to take more than blue paint. Redesigning the roads, though, is not just about creating beautiful segregated spaces in places like London's Hyde Park. We're going to reclaim the city for the bike, and it's going to be the symbol of that now. We're spending a billion pounds over the next 10 years to make London cycling much more cyclist-friendly, much more like Amsterdam. We're not going to be Amsterdam anytime soon. It took even Amsterdam 40 years to become Amsterdam, um, but we're going to be a lot further towards it than we were. 122 cyclists were killed in the UK last year, more than the number of soldiers that died in Afghanistan. The number of cyclists seriously injured went up by 4% to 3,222. This is the eighth year in a row that those figures have increased. This was her um, first graduation. She did her first degree at Royal Holloway. Even those who've had the worst imaginable experiences are still actively promoting a greater British cycling culture. She was cycling to work. 
um, going straight ahead. A lorry who was turning left turned left across her path and she was killed instantly. Do you encourage more people to take to their bikes even after your own experience? Yes, yes definitely, definitely that is the only way to go. There are so many arguments in favour of cycling. We are going to need to think radically about how we deal with the reality that there are going to be many, many more cyclists and many more pedestrians. The next person we meet en route to Westminster is Veronica. This CCTV footage shows the moment just before she was hit by that lorry. This is kind of the Marble Arch Guardatory and I was here, so he closed in behind me and then clipped my wheel um, from the back and dragged me all the way across um, down the Edgerow Road path. It's very easy to think, oh, it's not going to happen to me. Um, you hear these things on the news all the time, but as with my case as well, I mean, I thought, oh, well, it's not going to happen to me, but it does. So um, be careful. Back on our bikes and time for the final approach. We made it. Trusty Dutch bike and I and the crew survived the journey. Back over in the Netherlands, they're spending around £30 per person on cycling. Here in the UK, that figure is about £2.22, and you really can feel the difference. On the 2nd of September, though, the all-party parliamentary cycling group will be inside here, telling David Cameron to increase that figure to at least £10 per person. And this is being seen as the politician's opportunity to support the British cycling revolution. And as if by magic, the day after our journey ended, this part of the UK really did resemble a cycling utopia. 15,000 cyclists from across the UK descended on the capital for Ride London, the biggest cycling event the country has ever seen. It is relatively easy to organise a single weekend though. The real challenge for the UK will be in making cycling a sustainable and integrated part of the whole culture.